The American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology just released updates on blood pressure guidelines, and millions of people are so confused and worried. You may have heard that now if your top number, your systolic, is 125, it's considered elevated. That sounds scary, doesn't it? But here's the truth. These categories haven't really changed. Normal is still less than 120 over 80. Elevated is 120 to 129 with the bottom number under 80. Stage 1 is 130 to 139 or 80 to 89. And stage 2 is 140 or higher. What has really changed is the push to act earlier, whether this means lifestyle or, in some cases, medication. That's where I want to give you this clarity. Blood pressure itself is not the disease. It's a sign, a downstream effect of what's happening in your body. When we make it only about a number, we miss the big picture. And this is why so many people end up on two, three, or even four blood pressure medications and still don't feel healthy. So let's start with what high pressure does. Sustain higher readings, stiffen arteries, it damages the endothelium lining, it reduces nitric oxide production in the arteries, and strains the heart. That part is true, but lowering pressure without fixing the cause is like turning off a smoke alarm without putting out the fire. You see, one of the most important root causes of high blood pressure is insulin resistance. And I know you've heard this for a long time about diabetes and high blood sugar. And this is the one word you really hear in these guidelines. And yet, it's the single most common driver of hypertension today. When your cells stop responding properly to insulin, your body produces more and more of it. High insulin or hyperinsulinemia acts like pressing on the gas pedal of your nervous system. It revs up the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, which raises vascular tone and makes your arteries tighter. It also increases sodium retention in your kidneys, which raises blood volume and blood pressure. On top of that, insulin resistance reduces the ability to make nitric oxide, the molecule that normally helps the arteries relax and expand. The end result is stiffer vessels, more fluid retention, and more strain on your heart and brain. Now this is why some people can eat salt and not see much change in their blood pressure. But those with insulin resistance get a dramatic rise. You cannot solve that with a pill alone. The only way to fix it is to improve your metabolic health. You need to cut refined sugars and processed carbs, eat more protein and fiber, walk after meals, and get at least seven to nine hours of sleep, along with training your muscles and managing stress correctly. When insulin sensitivity improves, blood pressure often comes down naturally all the time. And in some people, the need for multiple medications drops significantly. That's physiology, not opinion. Now, here's the other side of the story. If we drive blood pressure too low, especially in older adults, we create a new danger. I see it all the time. People in their 60s or 70s or 80s are on several different kinds of medications, and I'm sure that you can relate to this if you are one of them. Walking around with blood pressure of 105 over 65, they're weak, they're dizzy, and they can't stand up. They fall, they break hips, and they don't have enough perfusion getting to the brain. Yes, extremely high blood pressure can definitely increase the risk of stroke. It can definitely affect heart attacks, kidney failure, and cognitive decline. But overly aggressive treatment in the wrong patient can lead to more harm than good. And that's why these decisions must be individualized. The SPRINT trial showed that lowering systolic below 120 in the higher risk adults reduced cardiovascular events, but it came with more dizziness, electrolyte problems, and kidney issues. And medicine is not one size fits all. So here's my advice. Don't panic over a single 125. That doesn't mean you suddenly need drugs. What matters is your average blood pressure over days and weeks, not one office reading. Use a validated home cuff and measure it twice a day for a week, average those numbers, and that's 
what you and your doctor should use. If you're in an elevated or stage one range or otherwise in a low risk, you should go hard on lifestyle for eight to 12 weeks. Prioritize cutting processed carbs, walking after meals, training your legs, getting quality sleep, reducing alcohol, eating potassium rich vegetables and fruits, and managing stress with techniques that reset your nervous system. That's how you target the root causes. And if after all of that, your average remains high and your cardiovascular risk isn't low, medication may help reduce events. But medication should never be the first and only line of defense. It's a tool. It's not a cure. So in closing, don't let headlines scare you. The American Heart Association and ACC can adjust categories, but your health depends on fixing the physiology that drives those numbers. High blood pressure isn't the enemy. It's a messenger telling you something is wrong upstream. Listen to your message, address insulin resistance, restore vessel health, and use medication only as part of a bigger plan. That's how you truly protect your heart, your brain, and your future. And I want you to be sure that you're staying healthy. But if your blood pressure is way out of range, you've applied these strategies and it's not coming down, I always recommend follow up with your doctor. I hope you enjoyed this video. I only wish you good health, a long life, and lots of happiness. Please share this video with your friends and family. Leave your comments below, and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.